Yes, uh, today I'm privileged to have a great man with me today, uh, Mr. Louis Ousu. Um, he has done a lot of uh, work in photography and he's got a business that is expanding in Umtata. Good day, Mr. Luusu. Good day. Thanks uh, for having me. Awesome. I just want to find out a little bit about your educational background because um, I know you were studying before and then now you are business and you're working for yourself. Yes. Could you tell us a little bit about your educational background? Um, I graduated with my first degree in general psychology okay uh, in the University of Ghana oh wow okay. uh, yes yes uh, 2015 mm -hmm. uh, I came to further that um, degree with an honors here at uh, Walter Sisulu University sure. uh, that's an honors in industrial psychology oh okay yes so uh, I have a background of uh, uh, psychology, psychology degree and then an honors yes oh that's great yes uh, that's great <laughs> thank you so uh, from my understanding, you started this business just after COVID, and this is a it was a difficult time for many of us. Sure. Uh, I know people who lost their jobs, family members who got affected. Basically, our the economy, the global economy, just crashed, That's and even South Africa took a beating during COVID and post COVID, and we're still trying to recover. True, sure. but you started a business that is flourishing how how did you do this um i must say that uh, the virus is a blessing to me all right <laughs> yes uh, i couldn't actually find a job when i was actually home uh, yeah. i did have the love for photography uh, mm -hmm. as such i had my first camera uh, in 2011 but it was just for hobby so whilst at home I decided that just to kill time mm. uh, why don't I practice shooting with my camera and then mm. that's where the passion grew for photography wow. so I started working um, in my mom's garage wow yes because of the plenty restrictions so that's where my first uh, studio was in my mom's garage uh, at Tumbuka extension right uh, so that's where it, it it actually all uh started it started out of uh boredom and me trying to kill time because of how we were restrained uh during the lockdown of uh COVID. wow yes sir you also come from a family of uh business people with what uncles and could you say that that influenced you to think in that way? Um, heavily, yes. I've had mm. a very huge influence and impact by my family. Um, most of my family members are into businesses. Mm. My mother owns a hairdressing salon. Uh, my father was a former uh, shoemaker and mm. currently a, a farmer in Ghana. Uh, my uncle owns a hair salon too. So. Uh, growing up, I've actually managed these businesses for them at a point in time. So right. my business skills um, were sharpened during right. that time. So um, it has actually heavily influenced me and it has helped me a lot because I don't struggle much when it comes to mm -hmm. uh, managing the business right. because I have prior experience into, into that. Yes, yes. So what would you say to somebody who doesn't have this business gene? that you have because <laughs> uh, how is this is this possible is it possible in south africa especially in the eastern cape to start a business that could potentially flourish like from the grassroots it, is it possible without this gene it's it's highly possible it's it's very very possible uh business is, is a learned skill Right, uh, and I believe that uh, nobody is born a business person mm -hmm. or a businesswoman or a man. Mm -hmm. uh, but once you put your mind to it and learn business, you can uh, literally start from the bottom mm -hmm. and then grow a business. It's it's all about your your determination. It's 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 about your passion. Mm -hmm. You know, these are the main things, not necessarily the genes. Mm -hmm. So you, you learn, you have the passion, you have the right skills. Mm -hmm. And with, with the right skills and other combination, uh, co combining factors, you can start a business from scratch, regardless your location, regardless your educational background, regardless the genes that you have, mm -hmm. and still make things happen. So you started this business in the, uh, just in, after COVID. 
What if it didn't work? Because you know, post COVID, people were struggling to pay their bills, mm. and some mm. people were out of work, financially strained. Now there's a war going on between Russia, Russia and Ukraine. Ukraine yeah. Fuel yeah. prices are going up. Was it not such a huge risk? What if what if it didn't work? What if people didn't come? Because one would say you are hungry. People are chasing bread and butter. They yeah. they want to put bread on the table. Yeah. The last thing they want to do is come out and spend, and spend. money and yes. on all other things which are kind of maybe not like things that are going to sustain their lives. True. So it True. was a risk. How did you work around that? Um, <clears throat> in business, uh, you have to take a risk in order to know if it's going to work or not. Sure. Uh, I think it's it's one of the core things that you have to do in business is to take a risk because you you're not assured. Mm -hmm. So, uh, as a business person, you are only rewarded mm -hmm. if you take the risk. Right. So even though things weren't really certain for me, mm. I had to take the risk as a business-minded person mm. to see whether this is going to work or not. But prior me opening up the studio and starting a photography studio, I had diligently done my homework. Right. And that is seeing where the gap was mm. here in Tata, studying my, my market very well. Wow. Realizing that there wasn't any proper photo studio in town. Why? So, so uh, my research and all my findings did tell me that it has a high success rate wow. as compared to it failing. Um, yes, uh, COVID times, uh, business, I was expecting business to be slow. Yes, but I wasn't expecting failure. Right. So, so I think I did take the That's risk amazing. and it's, it's paying off. I, I like say. that statement. I was not <laughs> expecting failure. Yes. That's, yes. that's a powerful yes. mindset. Yes. But uh, let's just go through what you offer because you are not just a photography yeah. studio. Because yeah. I know photography studios like um, in bigger places, bigger mm. cities like mm. East London, yeah. they've got whole lots of equipment. Yeah. And it's just a photography session that you offer people. Yes. But you have come up with unique concepts. Mm. You offer clients a package yeah. and ex an experience, like the whole thing of coming to have photos taken becomes yeah. a memorable experience, not yes. just in the form of a photo, but it's something that has an indelible mark on them as yes. a family or uh, people or individuals. Can you elaborate a little bit about the photo experience that on the packages that you have that people should come in and uh, experience? Okay. Um, as I said, I did quite good research um, and I realized that uh, most studios you just go take mm. pictures, get your pictures and mm. it ends there. Right. Uh, <clears throat> it's a nice thing to keep memories through uh, pictures but I realized that I could offer <clears throat> my clients more mm. to to make it more of a full experience mm -hmm. apart from you preserving your memories for you to enjoy the moment that you mm. step in the studio right. as such i have packages wow. and within my packages i i i offer uh, makeup services mm. i i even allow my clients to come in the studio with their own music i have sound oh. systems wow. you enjoy your personal music at the studio just to make you feel relaxed and mm. all those kind of things at the same studio we have a, a massage Whoa. session mm. uh, whereby you can actually relax have mm. pictures taken while you're wow. relaxing That's and great. after the massage session you can take pictures at the actual uh, studio mm. uh, we provide outfits uh, mm. we provide family shoots wow. so we all we have all these packages so that uh, the your, your booking or your presence at the studio is not just to come take pictures but to create more memories that are lasting uh, for the clients, yes. Wow, that's amazing. Yes. So one person said that uh, rich people don't pay for things; mm -hmm. they pay for experiences. Experiences. So true. that's a powerful, true. True. powerful, powerful thing. Yes. And then also with the whole experience package, I've yeah. seen you've got a special package for 
uh, families, like couples, husbands yeah. and wives, and yes. for if those who are expecting uh, their children, children like yes. women who are pregnant, and yes. they will, most women, uh, especially from an African background, mm. it's not common. I don't know yeah. from North Africa or South Africa or Southern Africa, but it's not common for women to take photographs of themselves when they are pregnant. That's true. I don't know whether it's a taboo or... <laughs> But that is becoming something new and it's becoming quite fashionable for the African woman mm. to take photos of themselves yeah. uh, because there was probably some taboo in a woman showing her belly or showing her body yeah. when she's pregnant. Yes. And, but you are offering that package. How, how is it being accepted in this um, deeply traditional uh, society of the Eastern Cape? Because comparing it to other provinces in our nation, there are a lot of people who still practice a lot of traditions and they, that you are breaking through with this new concept. How, mm. how is that going? I just, it's an interesting thing. Um, I've never seen it before. Initially, I did face a lot of challenges, not, not from the clients who booked, but from mostly uh, the partners of the clients. Right. Uh, there are some, should I say, uh, myths mm. uh, that revealing the tummy to the public eye uh, can cause harm to the mm. unborn child mm. um, but I decided that I should offer this maternity shoot for those who don't believe in this myth in other words those who are not superstitious those who are not superstitious <laughs> yeah. exactly um, I do not believe in that uh, myth and those uh, superstitious things. Uh, as such, I decided that I am going to do maternity shoots and I'm going to provide maternity dresses for ladies who want to uh, embrace and uh, enjoy and, you know, capture the, the memories of yeah. the whole experience mm. of being uh, pregnant. I think to me, it's a, it's a very important thing. Mm. As much as capturing memories of your child while born, mm. It's also a, a very great thing to have memories of your unborn child. Wow. So I decided that I am going to put aside uh, the superstitious beliefs mm. uh, as long as a client is willing mm. to come through my doors and have a maternity shoot. I am going to assist that person to capture those memories and give that person a great experience. Wow, that's, that's yes. fantastic. That's yes. fantastic. Yes. What about your competitors? Because they are big <laughs> photography companies. How do you feel? Do you ever feel intimidated or do you feel like you're comfortable in your space, like what you are offering? Or, for example, Pepsi and Coca-Cola. Coca-Cola, yes. You know? Yes, yes. Do you feel that or they, does it ever come to your mind? Uh, it actually is on my mind most of the time. Right. As a business person, you need to be aware of your competitors. And the main aim is to always stay ahead or a step or two ahead of your competitors. So I've studied my competitors very well. Mm. And um, as such, I've taken steps and measures to make sure that mm. uh, I'm always ahead of my competitors. Mm. Wow. Um, most of my competitors specialize in um, particular photography sessions mm. so uh, from uh, the start of the conversation uh, we've come to know that I do various types of uh, photo shoots maternity mm. family newborn uh, I do corporate shots wow. I do virtually almost everything wow. including weddings wow and uh, and you're traveling to Cape Town now for shoots for shoots you're getting shoots outside yes. the province that's yeah. amazing Yes. So as much as I am diverse in my shoots, um, my quality mm -hmm. and my professionalism mm -hmm. is not affected in any way. Right. Uh, I'm actually a jack of all trades and wow. a master of all <laughs> wow. Wow. in this game. Exactly. That's good. So, so I've learned a lot of uh, about my competitors and I know how they function. I know what they offer and I'm always a, a step ahead of them. Yes, they are competition, but... Uh, they don't instill fear in me. They just motivate me to do better now and then. So what can you say to someone who wants to start up a business? Maybe it might not be photography. Okay. They want to do something else. Okay. They have a passion. Maybe it's a woman who's watching us. Mm. She's good at cooking. She mm. wants to make cakes. Mm. But she sees that the market is already flooded. Like yeah. there's Woolworths. They'll walk to Woolworths. They've got cakes there. Yeah. Yeah. Different cakes. And what would you say to that person who feels like, 
I do like cooking, I do like doing this thing, but the market is already flooded. flooded. There are already people, lots of people doing it. Mm. Um, what would you say to that person? Because there are many people like that. That's true. Yeah. Uh, there is no need to invent something new. Right. You just need to reinvent. Okay. So you say so, there's no need to invent something new. Yes. You just, just need, need to, to reinvent. reinvent. Can it. you elaborate? Can you um, for explain instance, further? I have this phone here. Uh, there is no need for you to find another means of communication apart from mobile phones. Right. You can stick to the already invented mobile phones mm -hmm. and make something that is unique. Okay. So we have Samsung. Mm -hmm. They have their phones. Mm -hmm. But Apple also have their phones. They mm -hmm. reinvented the same model of, of phones. Mm -hmm. So you might have Woolies, but you just need to do something which is unique mm. to you. Right. So, for instance, there are a whole lot of photographers in town, mm. but I stand out. Yeah. Because I, I decided that um, I'm not going to do anything new. I am just going to continue with this photography business, but then I'm going to just stand out. So the most important thing is when you are passionate about your business, when you, you have the right skills and everything, you need to just try to find something that's going to make you unique. Right. That's going to set you different from the rest. The rest. Exactly. So since you talk about being set from the rest, yes. are there people who are intimidated by what you're doing? Um, who have come to say... <laughs> Uh, we don't like what you're doing. Uh, are there people, have you met any of those people? They don't say it directly. But they show it. But yes, they show it. I've actually had a, quite a bad uh, experience um, here in Tata. Mm. Uh, but I didn't experience it uh, personally. I have an assistant photographer that I've been training. And this other time I sent him out on, on the field. We had mm. a, a shoot by the museum. And one of the guys approached him. They wanted to seize his camera. Mm. And they asked him, under whose authority are you shooting at the museum? And he told them that I'm operating under soft tech photography. And they're like, oh, you are the one who is spoiling our business now. Mm. You are the one who's taking all the clients. Mm. So most uh, of the sure. photographers, especially those who shoot outside, mm. Are very intimidated. Oh, My presence is very shooting. well felt, and uh, they do feel intimidated by what uh, I am doing. doing yeah. But it's it's business. I'm yeah. not going to, um, you know, regress mm -hmm. because of me intimidating them. Mm -hmm. I need to just strive and push forward. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 No, that's yeah. great. Yeah. So in the next five years, where do you see soft tech photography growing? Where do you envision? Going to I, I want this uh, company mm -hmm. to be a household name. Wow. So uh, just like uh, one wakes up, I'm going to ShopRite, and everybody knows where ShopRite is. I'm going to Woolies, mm -hmm. or I'm going to buy full at Caltex. Mm -hmm. I want soft tech photography to be a household name in the next five years. Mm -hmm. uh, not just that, but I want to actually train and empower the youth Wow, Unemployment has skyrocketed, yeah. skyrocketed a lot, and I believe that uh, there is the market is enough, uh, mm. is more for other photographers to come into mm. into the game. So I have already started giving uh, photography lessons, mm. uh, but in the next five years, I want to have a full academy. Wow! Teaching. So we're going to have soft tech academy. Yes. Wow. Photography Academy. That's fantastic. Teaching the youth how to use the camera mm. to create memories, mm. uh, to take pictures mm. that speak volumes. Wow. So that is the the main mm. vision mm. for soft tech photography in the next five years. Wow. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. What an insightful interview with Mr. Ousu. Can you just tell us where is your a studio located for those people who want to come in and have uh, photos Sessions. taken and have a nice experience with their, their partners and their wives and their children. Uh, can you tell us where they can come? Um, yes, uh, we are in Tata CBD, uh, 50 Madeira Street. Uh, we are next to Inkspot, uh, the same building that Splash and Hang was a couple of years ago. Right. Yes, sir. 
Yes. Sir. All right. Well, that's great. Thank you so much for joining us uh, for this interview. Thank you, Doc, for having me. We appreciate your time. Me. And it's fantastic. We wish you all the best with SoftTech. And we want to see SoftTech doing great things in the years to come. And we want to see you on billboards, you know, in the Eastern Cape and uh, expanding the rest of the country, doing Thank more stuff in, in uh, photography, in video, and sound. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you for having me.